morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this. This is Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be talking about my top five, bottom five, luxury eyeshadow palettes. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today we're going to be chatting about my top five, bottom five, of my luxury palettes. So I actually struggle quite a bit because I don't focus a lot of my content on luxury makeup. I've got a couple of things here and there, and I just thought I could come on here to show you my top, top five favorite. If you want to shell out a bit of extra cash kind of palettes, but also palettes from those same brands where I'm like, mm, do you really need those? So those would be like the bottom five picks that I have for you today. So that's what we're going to be chatting about today. Let's get cracking. But before we do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to come in here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, SSI Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool rouge undertone, I deem myself a snow angel. So if you'd like to join the snow angel club, then definitely click the subscribe button down below. And then hopefully you would like to join my little family on here. So yeah, top five, bottom five luxury palettes. I already mentioned in my intro how I'm not really focusing my makeup collection on luxury makeup. If you're looking for really good recommendations on anything luxury, then definitely check out Michelle Wong. I love how she just talks about all the bougie brands. I do not have the budget to be chatting about all of those makeup uh, products for sure, but I like to dip my toe in from time to time and sort of try things out here and there. So there are a couple of products by brands that I really, really enjoy and a couple of luxury brands that I do keep an eye on. Charlotte Tilbury is one, Natasha Denona is one, especially when it comes to eyeshadows. I like checking out what Natasha Denona has on offer. And there's just a couple that do show up in my videos from time to time. It's just not my bread and butter. So I have a couple of things, but I actually kind of struggled putting this video together for you. But I thought it could be fun to show you what someone who kind of really has to think about like spending the money on these more high-end products to, you know, really sort of come from that perspective. And I don't just buy anything blindly. And when I spend this kind of money on it, I also want it to be worth it. So you can bet on it that my bottom five is going to feature brands and products from brands where I feel that how much you pay for it didn't really warrant the price point that it goes for. So that definitely goes into that. Doesn't mean that those brands aren't doing good makeup or that they're not doing anything else here. I just feel that sometimes with certain price points, I you know just want it to be not just good, but for these kind of price points, I expect it to be extra good and I need it to exceed my expectations. And if it doesn't do that, I feel a bit bummed sometimes. So yeah, that's where the bottom five goes in. So that's what I wanted to start us off with. And then we're going to go into the top five towards the end of the video, because I always like ending my videos on a positive note. Now, I think the first thing I want to mention here is actually quite an obvious one and quite a well-known one, but I don't think you need to put your money towards Chanel eyeshadow. Chanel did update their formula over time. It used to be very chalky. I remember that when I first got into makeup. Then a couple of years ago, they updated the formula and I have a couple of the quads from back in the day. This is the Road Movie Quad, which I believe they still do, but I got it as part of a, of a limited edition collection years ago, like this is a couple of years old, but rekindled my love for teal eyeshadow, which is why I keep it around. But for how expensive these little quads are, I mean, aren't these like 55, maybe 60 euros over here? I mean, and you don't get that much product. How much do you get in here? You only get two grams. Now I don't know about you, but we're gonna talk about a brand in a minute where a single pen contains two grams of product. Two grams is the entire palette, which means you get 0.5 grams in each of these eyeshadows for literally so much money. And to say that these are really, really good eyeshadows, they're buildable, they're workable, they're definitely very inoffensive. If you are someone who wants just a wash of color, then these are really nice shadows. But I feel I can also find that kind of thing at the drugstore. Um, so Chanel is perhaps really good for like one and done shadows, but I feel there are a lot of one and done shadows that are just far more affordable that I like even better than Chanel quality. And you really don't have to spend that much money on it. So these little quads are just a little bit expensive for what they give you. The color stories I've seen them do in recent years aren't super exciting. And I did end up keeping just the two that really stood out to me. I had four of these, but since I wasn't using them much, I just decluttered the two that I felt weren't really that great. 
So that's why I did hang on to this one because this one I hold very near and dear to my heart indeed because of those teals in there. And that's really what got my teal love train going. So this quad, I'm happy to own it. But to say like, if you get yourself, like if you want to splurge on eyeshadow, go to Chanel. That would not be my recommendation. And this I've mentioned before when I did a top five, bottom five with this brand, Charlotte Tilbury, similarly to the Chanel quads. Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow is raved about it a little bit more. I feel these are hyped up, especially some of the more limited edition offerings from the brand. But to be quite fair, this is the Vintage Vamp. And for how much, ex for how expensive this is and what you can do with it and how much product you get, I mean, these are 60, maybe even 65 euros. I mean, she also gives them away for free when she like does sales, which is how I got the walk of no shame. And that looks like a really pretty color story, but I haven't even used it yet. This comes with a bit more product though. This is 5.2 grams. And I think they're like similarly priced to the Chanel ones, but still, is that really how much you want to spend on it? I'm not entirely sure. It does come in a really pretty small compact. It's got the rose gold packaging that Charlotte Tilbury is known for. So I think for a lot of people, these are also just, you know, part of the experience of buying the brand, but I would not recommend this as a first purchase from this makeup line. I think that you're far better off uh, getting like one of the foundations that they have on offer. Eyeshadow is just not where I go to when it comes to Charlotte Tilbury. I don't feel it's a go-to brand for that. They do some really lovely things and I did almost, almost I caved because there is one color story that this comes in. It's known under two names. It's called the Rebel and Green Lights and they seem to be going in and out of stock under these different names. But the Rebel is currently in stock and it's a really pretty green quad. And that one still, like after all these years, it's the one that still pulls me in because this is one I've swatched so many times in store. But yeah, I feel that not all of the color stories are super unique or exciting. Um, I know a lot of people love the Pillow Talk one, but I have shades like that in so many of my palettes that I don't feel I need to pay this kind of money for a quad. So yeah, that's why the Charlotte Tilbury quads are also a bottom five. And you're gonna think I'm probably disliking a lot of the small things, but I feel like luxury brands tend to do smaller things, it seems. But the Petite Pro palettes from Viseyard, these are cute, they're very pretty. I do like them. Um, I do like how small and curated they are, um, but what I don't love about this one in particular, this is the Petite Pro Pre 3, is how small these pans are. They are so incredibly tiny. You can barely stick your brush in. And these are, again, quite expensive for what you get, but you do get eight shades in here. Uh, this comes with eight grams of product, so we're going up there. We're going up there, but I also just felt that now that I have other Viseyard palettes, and I know the formula a little bit better. Like I bought this to check out the mattes that the brand has on offer because before this I had only bought and tried one of the like larger palettes, the 12 pans that had like satin shimmers in every shade. And I wasn't in love with that. I was like, is this what everybody's going on about? Why do people love Viseart so much? I didn't get it. Then I tried this and was like, now I get the formula and I really started dipping my toe in and I have just found other color stories from this brand that I like a million times better. Yeah, for me, this is just very, just it's very neutral with a pop of green, which is why I keep this around because I like that dark, like I like this. I like this and I like these mauve tones that it has. And then you just get some brownie neutrals. It's got a full row of mattes, a full row of shimmers. I can't fault it with that sort of division it's got going on here. And for a neutral palette, it has a couple of cute things going on for sure. But these are just, I kind of lose these in my makeup collection because they're so tiny that I really need to make sure that I give them a dedicated spot so I can still find them because these can just like get stuck in every crevice of your makeup collection and you're like, where did that guy go? So yeah, these are very small, very handy. If you travel a lot, these are cute. They do have removable pans. So if you have a few of these, you can mix and match them. It's just that Viseyard does different sized pans in all of their palettes, it seems, which is super annoying. So that's why I do like the ones I have, but I don't feel I need more of these Petite Pro palettes. Now we're getting to the true boozy sh stuff that I have. Pat McGrath, I have to say, not all of the Pat McGrath shadows that I've tried, I feel are created equal. 
and the first thing I bought almost put me off of trying the brand again. This is the Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. That was, I think, the first time she released quads, and I remember going like, okay, I want to try the brand. It comes in the same kind of box, like this goes inside it. As with the larger mother mothership palettes, I was like, great, these are like 60, 65 euros. So I was like, it's a great way for me to try the brand. Also, because everybody had been raving about the special shades from Pat McGrath, and these Blitz Astral Quads are different from the Lux Quads that she does now. This is four special shades. And I remember struggling so terribly making this work. It goes on beautifully, but I had found that I needed mattes to really make this play well and last on my lids. I used it a couple of times and every single time I had really, really bad creasing. And I was like, this never happens to me anymore. I always double prime my lids. I feel it makes any eyeshadow just stick down and not move even on a hot day, even on a full on work day where I go out for drinks afterwards. My eyeshadow stays put unless I have very bad teary eyes, which, you know, hay fever, you feel me. So this creasing on me this badly really, really surprised me. And I was like, well, if this is what the special shades can do. However, I really had to learn to work with these shadows, making sure that I use them in the right way, that I place them in the right way, that I use the right brushes with it and put a matte in the crease. Because I think the first time I used it, I think I put the purple in the crease and it just creased horribly. Um, but yeah, this took me a few tries to find out how to make it work and appreciate it. But here's the thing. I already mentioned it in my like run up to showing you these palettes. When I pay this much money, I don't want to have to put in this much brain space to use the product. I want it to be effortless. I want it to be cool. This is still some really cool shades, which is why I keep it around. And it is Pat McGrath after all, you know, but this is my least favorite thing I own from her. <laughs> so I'm like, this was my, this was my first steps into this brand. And I was like, if this is what the brand is like, I don't know, I'm gonna spend a lot of money on it. And then of course, things happened. I think I showed you what I owned in my uh, Pat McGrath uh, palette collection, I think fall last year. I can link that down below if you're interested um, because I, have, I think I have swatches up with all of this stuff. So in case you'd like to see that, then uh, I can link you to some uh, other content as well. But yeah, this was just a bit of a letdown once I got my hands on it and I was like, what was the fuss all about? So with Pat McGrath, I feel it's a bit hit or miss. Um, and I definitely haven't tried all of the different formulas that she does. I have a couple of the motherships, which you'll see in a minute. I've got a couple of the quads. I like the quads though, that she does now because the looks quads do include some mattes and I feel those work a bit better because of it. So I do prefer the newer formula over this older one. And finally, my final bottom five, Natasha Denona Lila palette. Also my first purchase from this brand and me going like, is this what the fuss is all about? But I think at the end of the day, this was a lot of people's least favorite Natasha Denona palette. So I think I kind of just bought the one that wasn't the best. And then again, I sort of dipped my toe in again after trying this. And then I was like, oh, this is what the fuss is all about. So I started getting it <laughs> a little bit later. And now Natasha Denona is one of my favorite eyeshadow brands for sure. But yeah, let me show you what the Lila looks like. I mean, if you know what I love in terms of eyeshadow, you might be a little bit surprised. I mean, it's not as purple as the palette might expect you to do, you know, just have you expect because you only get purples really here. But what I ended up appreciating this palette for in particular when I went back to it, because I almost decluttered this for my collection. And I just felt that there were a couple of shades in here that didn't play together for me very well. So I actually took out one of the shades from my gold palette put it in here, and the shade that was in here is the shade that I popped in the gold palette. So this yellow tone gold is the gold that you get in the middle of the gold palette, which is my least favorite shade from that palette, even though it's the name of the palette. I know. I'm a... <laughs> that's just my preference. But what I ended up finding out is that it goes cool toned into berries, into warm tones, into neutrals. 
So in a way, this palette does everything. It's got some really stunning neutrals that can be go-tos. I mean, I can pull these shades out and like use them as a single in my singles collection as well if I'd like to, which is why I ended up keeping it around because there are a couple of shades here. This like peachy duochrome goodness is really nice. I do enjoy these purples here. These cool tones are really pretty, especially this like weird charcoal-y grayish brown shade. That's really, really, really cool. I just don't really care for like these shades here. Like that's the only part of the palette I don't love. But yeah, the Lila was another one where I was like, why? Why is this so expensive? Why are people raving about it? I don't get it, which is why I put it in the bottom five here. But as I just mentioned, I did find myself loving a lot of other Natasha Denona things. So guess what's going to show up in the top five? Oh yes, some more Natasha Denona, because the brand can do some really good things. I thought that could be a nice bridge into the top five, so let me just kick it off right away and redeem myself with some of the hate I just threw in Natasha Denona's direction because I do really like the mini retro. I think this is one of my favorite palettes from her. I just think this color story is really, really cute. It's very light. It's great for fair skin. It looks quite warm toned because it looks beachy, but you do get cool tones towards this end. So I feel you can really mix and match this. You can do a full on green look if you'd like. This shimmer on the end is the transformative shade of all dreams. You can do a peachy look if you want, but on me it pulls a bit more neutral. It doesn't look overly warm toned. And then we have, of course, the ability to mix and match this as well. So you can go in with this in the crease and in the outer V, you can pop, pop this on the lid, this on the lid, that on the lid. You can use this to top things over things. You can pop this in the inner corner. You can put that in the inner corner. This on the lower lash line with the peaches on the top lash. Like it's, it's a, for how few shades you get, this just gives you variety. You get, it just, I love it. And this is of course the mini version of her palettes, which go for like 25 euros. I think they've gone up in price. Now they're 27, I think. But when I bought this, this was still 25 euros, which is still a lot. I mean, for five shadows, I mean, Catrice does very similar packaging and those are four. Granted, you don't get that much versatility out of those palettes you can get with this one. So I feel this color story is unique. I understand why a lot of people were a little bit bummed out that the larger retro that was released later didn't have those green tones. It was more of like a mauve tone palette, whereas this is more like peachy, which sagey greens. It's very much a very different color story, but she seems to do that in a lot of her mini palettes of like the larger palettes that the color stories don't fully match up which I think is actually good because very often, like Urban Decay did that with the Wild West palette where they just release like six shades from the original palette as a mini, but people already have the larger palette aren't going to be buying the mini if you release them out of order. So I think Natasha Denona is very clever to be doing color stories that are slightly different, but that do fit the vibe of like the name that the palette has. So the mini retro is one of my favorites and actually on my eyes today, is another Natasha Denona palette because I tried out my mini Zendo for the first time, which was another one that I was sort of lusting after. And I'm hoping to be able to combine the two to get even more looks out of this because that deep plum that I've got going on in the outer V would be so pretty if you combine it with these two shades. And the grayish green that is in my inner corner will be great with these two. And then of course you have the you have those deeper peachy shades in the Zendo that can really amp this up as well. So I feel that having the Zendo and the retro, like if you're going to try Natasha Denona, get those two minis and I think you can do a lot. And you can really try the brand. I feel the quality in these is amazing. I mean, they're so easy to work with, really easy to blend with. It's night and day, I feel, compared to the Leela. I, that's just the way I feel. And just like with Natasha Denona, I have to redeem myself when it comes to Pat McGrath shadows as well, because like I said, I did try more. I think that if you're going to try a Pat McGrath palette, make it a mothership so you get a couple of her different textures. So it's a bit expensive and the subliminal mothership one is my favorite. I believe it's Michelle Wong's favorite too, which she said in, in a recent video I watched by her. But yeah, this is what the outer box looks like, which I think is very aesthetically pleasing. 
And then you get the beveled mirror, you get all that goodness. It's a very heavy palette. Like this, this boy is chunky. Like you get the gold on the back. I mean, it's it's a whole thing. My mirror is looking a little worse for wear because I had, I had difficulty removing the sticker that was on it when I bought it. So my mirror in this one looks very, very weird. Um, but that's not because there's anything wrong with the palette. I just didn't manage to get the sticker off. So yeah, this is what the subliminal looks like, Mothership One. One of the reasons I love it, of course, it's a cool tone palette, but there are now 10 of these. So you can pick whichever palette you'd like from this line. I've tried a couple of other ones, but I have to say that this is still the best one for me and my skin tone. The reason being that a lot of the Mothership palettes are quite warm toned. Even the ones that you might expect to be a little bit more cool toned are warm toned. Divine Rose One, I like it, but it's got quite a lot of warm tones. I actually prefer the Vine Rose 2, which has a lot more bright shades, and the Utopian Dream over the Divine Rose 1, whereas I thought that the Vine Rose 1 was going to be a favorite. But yeah, she does a lot of peachy, pinky shades. This is definitely a little bit different from what she's doing at the moment, even though that Moonlit Seduction palette is still like... Like, it's pulling on my heartstrings, people. I really want that one, but I only buy these kind of palettes on sale. If she does 25, 30% off, then these retail for around a 100 euro mark, and then I feel they're worth it. But don't pay full price for these, for sure, because it's a bit crazy. In here, we get a black. So the layout of these palettes is very similar on each one. You get the darkest and the lightest shade in the... Uh, in the far right corner, left corner, if you open it up. And then you just get a couple of other mattes to like deepen things out. You usually get a couple of like more satin leaning shimmers. And then you get four special shades. These special shades I love. <laughs> These are great. I like the mattes you get in here. I like those more like satiny shades that it has too. It can just play around with a little bit more texture and dimension because of it. And these taupey shades, our life, which is why I love this one. This is one of my favorite bougie picks for sure. I can't wait to try that Moonlit Seduction palette, but like I mentioned, I'm going to wait until it goes on sale, which probably because it's the newest one, it probably won't go, like won't be part of a sale until Black Friday. So that's why I'm gonna have to wait around a couple of months before I can try that. But yeah, I have tried some, I've tried several of these and like I mentioned, as long as you get a Pat McGrath palette that has a mix of different textures, they are very workable. Her mattes are some of the smoothest, but I also love how you get more shimmers than mattes in a lot of these palettes. I prefer a shimmer over a matte. I really only need like a matte in the crease and the rest of my look can have shimmer. I'm happy. I'm down. I don't need like a matte in every single placement and just putting a shimmer on the lid. I feel it's not very flattering with my eye shape. I actually prefer it if there's a little bit of the mica sparkle of shimmers in my crease, in my outer V, on my lower lash line, because I feel it defines my eyes a little bit better. And it just helps to brighten things up and open things up a little bit more, which is another reason why I do really like these. I just feel that not all Pat McGrath palettes are created equal. So if you were to buy just one and you are like me, pale, cool to neutral undertone, this would be my pick. In my bottom five, I talked about Ch Chanel and Charlotte Tilbury. Like, they're not really great quality for the price point, but I feel there is a luxury brand that does a similar style palette that I used to love, then they changed the formula and I didn't love them anymore. And now because so many people are raving about them again, I decided to try some of their newest, uh, newer offerings. And what I'm talking about here is Dior. I'm really liking the Dior palettes that I've bought in more recent times. This is the House of Dreams palette, which was limited edition for Christmas. And this is just, it's one and done shadows in a palette. So if you like sheer washes of color, then this is really nice. These are very nice and blendable. Again, these are quite expensive, but you do get 7.5 grams of product, which is more than the Chanel and the Charlotte Tilbury. And this retails for, again, a similar price point, like 55, 60, 65 euros. I think that there are different price points within the Dior line, like depending on whether something's limited edition or not. I'm very much still looking at like lusting after the cashmere palette that they do, 
but I feel it's too similar to this one. So that's why I didn't pick that one up. But it's got this really lovely taupey shade, like these two I love. You do get a shade to deepen things up with, something to blend it out, a silver to pop in your inner corner. It's a little bit more cool tone neutral leaning. I love this. They do some really pretty things with really pretty embossing. And I feel that when it comes to luxury makeup, where it's like about the packaging, I love this dark blue shiny thing. I'm not sure if you can see, but um, it used to be that when you held it up against the light that there were like um, the CD was like embossed in the packaging. That's no longer the case, but I just like the packaging of this so much better than I do the Chanel and the Charlotte Tilbury. Maybe it's because I like cool tones. I'm very much more drawn towards silver and navy, like this is, than the rose gold and the gold uh, and the black packaging of the Chanel and uh, Charlotte Tilbury stuff for sure. So for me, this is just aesthetically more pleasing. We get a few more shades. You don't get a whole lot of product, but I feel like if you wanna like splurge and have that bougie moment for yourself, then check out the Dior line. I feel their color stories are better if you have a cool undertone. They do some really pretty neutral things, even things that have been permanent for years. They don't tend to discontinue a lot of things from their permanent line, but definitely also look into their limited editions when those are around. They very often do some really pretty embossing. I'm not sure if you can see here, but this has little houses. It's really, really pretty. I believe it's actually the Dior uh, store on the Champs-Élysées that is embossed in here. And then we're ending the video with two brands I've already mentioned, but again, one was in the, both of them were also in the bottom five. So the Violette Etendue from Viseart. I already mentioned that I didn't like the Petit Pro 3, but that's mainly to do with the fact that those pans are so tiny. This, I feel much more like it's worth the price point. These retail for around 40 euros. You get 12 pans. You, these are also removable. They're a little bit bigger, and I just like the color stories of these larger palettes so much more. I actually have this guy, the Kashmiri, and one of the Petit Four Lilas. I think that that's the, what it's called and those can actually all be mixed and matched. So I like this pan size a little bit better. These are removable. Like I said, I love this color story a lot better. I also like how these palettes have a little bit more of a design to it. They seem to be doing this in their Petit Pro palettes now as well, but I just like that this has like the purple leafy design. I think it's really cute. You get some really good neutrals in here, some brighter pops of purple, but everything in here has that purpley, plummy, mauvey undertone, which I really appreciate. It's a really, really good purple palette as well. It's one of my favorites in my collection for sure. And I just love this. And this is actually what I'm currently giving away together with the Kashmiri in my giveaway that I'm running this month. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I'll leave the link down below for my giveaway so that you can enter because I'm giving away this Viseart palette and the Kashmiri. So you, you know I love Viseart, but it's just that the Petit Pro is just so itty bitty and tiny that I don't love it. With this, the only downside I feel to it is the packaging overall because this, it's just like, what are we doing with this? I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to like do it like this and then you have the mirror on the other side, like you can sit it up. I don't need that. Like I wish, that this would just like, this flap wasn't here and it would close like this, w would have my preference. That's the only downside to these Viseart palettes for me, but they are very lovely. I love the quality. I love the color stories. They do some really, really cool neutral things, but they also have some, like, I think do, though they also have some more colorful things, that Bijou palette that came out over Christmas time. Like they do some really, really fun things. So I l definitely like the Viseart formula, but I, I think you just need to really find the palette that is right for you within their line before you start splurging on them. And finally, of course, I had to feature my favorite Natasha Denona palette in here, the Glam. I love this. This is one of my favorite cool tone color stories. And I do think that quite a few of the more luxury aim brands do more cool tones than a lot of like the mid-tier, high-end, Sephora, aimed at beauty influencer kind of brands, if, if you're catching my vibe. I think that these brands are better at doing cool tone color stories if they do them. Case in point, the Glam. This is stunning. We get a little bit of warmth here, 
but everything here is very cool toned. We get that lovely rose gold. We get a really good charcoal gray, grayish brown that it's, it's deep enough to give you versatility to use it as a liner, deepening up shade, all that jazz, but it's not a black, a cool tone palette without a black. Thank you. Thank you. These you can pop out. So you can also put, put these into a singles palette if you'd like, mix and match, change this color story around. You can do with it whatever you like. Um, you get some really good transition shades for if you have fair skin. I really, really love this. And it's got more shimmers than mattes. It only has five mattes. Everything else has a shimmer. I love this. And out of like packaging wise, I think this is such a nicely curated, small palette, easy to work with. And here you get quite a bit of product, I believe. Natasha Denona is known for doing quite a lot of product. Yes, this is 19.25 grams of product. So granted, these are 65 euros, but you do get quite a bit of product. So for 15 pants, I think you get more than a gram of product in each one, which I think is some of the best, like if you factor in like how much product you get versus how many pans and then the packaging and everything, I think it's the best deal in terms of that. I mean, I believe the larger ones from Natasha Denona come with two grams of product in each shadow, which is why they're so expensive. You do get a little bit more than like a Chanel or a Charlotte Tilbury or a Viseart, which is why I feel that these can still be worth it. And I mentioned in my bottom five that, you know, with Natasha Denona, it can be a little bit mm, but that was really just the Lila palette for me. So I'm putting the bottom five for that Lila palette in particular. Everything else I've tried from Band, I really liked. I could have swapped this out for my retro palette. I could have put the gold palette in here. The Zendo I now know I love now that I've used it. The Mini Love I've loved. So all of the other Natasha Denona palettes I've tried, I have just loved. If you're gonna splurge on one brand that is a little bit more expensive, make it Natasha Denona. I feel they are very consistent in what they do in terms of quality and they just do some really lovely color stories. Save up for it, wait for a sale, get yourself a coupon code if you find it too expensive, but I feel that Natasha Denona, in terms of what you pay, you also get the quality and you do get quite a lot of product. These make for some really good everyday eyeshadow palettes that you can just use into oblivion. And that's what I love. So when it comes to like things that wow me, this one for sure. So that's it, there you have it. Those were my top five, bottom five eyeshadow palettes when it comes to the more luxury segment of my eyeshadow palette collection. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share in the comments what your top five, bottom five would be for the more high-end things or maybe there's something on your wish list that you would like to share. I would love to know. And then I hope you'd like to come back for more because I've got lots more videos coming your way. So definitely subscribe to the channel so you're always updated when I upload new videos. And for now, I hope you have a great day. Take care, everybody. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.